Hello, I'm Mark Rohr. I'm the president and CEO of Rohr Aesthetics. Rohr Aesthetics is based in Birmingham, Alabama, and we manufacture lasers and other energy-based devices used for aesthetic procedures. Dear Doctor is a video series that features the Rohr Aesthetics products. Tonight, we're gonna to be discussing the Pixel 8 RF radio frequency microneedling system with Dr. Randy Wallman. Dr. Wallman's based in Lexington, Kentucky. He's a double board certified facial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. He's published numerous articles, has been the editor for two medical books on facial plastic surgery. He's done around the globe as one of the leading educators in the field of aesthetic medicine. Dr. Wallman, welcome to Dear Doctor. Well, thanks a lot, Mark, I appreciate it. Thank you for those kind words. And uh, before we get started, you and I have known each other for 15 years, but before we get started, I just wanna ask you, uh, I know COVID's been tough for everyone this year. How's your practice doing and have y'all recovered from it pretty well? Yeah, our practice is doing great. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, we've been very fortunate in, in that uh, our, our patients are very loyal. Uh, we, we were out of work like a lot of practices during the lockdown, during the national lockdown uh, for almost two months. Uh, but there was a great deal of pent up demand. And, you know, we've been taking things very cautiously since we came back and trying to do things the right way. And fortunately, uh, our patients have stuck with us and, and uh, we've come through this thing uh, very well. Okay, good. That's good to hear. Dr. Waldman, I've been in your office several times. Not only is your office gorgeous, but you have a lot of aesthetic devices that you use on a daily basis. And I know when you were looking at RF microneedling systems, it wasn't just the ROAR system that you looked at. Can you tell me what, what RF microneedling systems did you look at and what made you decide to buy the ROAR system? Honestly, Mark, uh, you know, we always look at return on investment. And uh, I really don't look past ROAR aesthetics for very much uh, because I know that that your equipment is going to give me the best return on investment. And I'm not, you know, you're not paying me to say that and uh, have never paid me to say that. But uh, we're very cost conscious in our practice. I think that's one of the reasons for our success, but we don't sacrifice quality uh, and never will. Uh, so the equipment that you had from the very first uh, fractional uh, CO2 laser that, uh, that we prototyped for you and that ultimately became uh, you know, a fixture in, in our industry, uh, now down to the Pixel, which uh, we kind of prototyped for you as well. And uh, it's now become a fixture in our practice and uh, is the leading income producer uh, in the skincare portion of our, our practice, and it's not even close. So uh, we've been thrilled with, uh, uh, with your equipment over the years, whether it's uh, uh, the Spectrum or the Phoenix or uh, now the, the Pixel. So uh, I think it's a tribute to how innovative you are uh, and, uh, and how you treat your customers as well. Those things obviously have to go together. Well, and Dr. Wallman, that's what Roar tries to do. We try to provide uh, affordable technologies so that you can realize your return on investment. So uh, uh, do you think the Pixel 8, after using it, you've had it for probably two years, has it met your expectations? Yeah, it has. And, you know, everything's a learning curve, Mark. Uh, we've, uh, we've gotten a little bit better about knowing who to use it on and, and how much uh, uh, that the patient can expect from it. Uh, trying to make sure that patients have realistic expectations is a challenge in everything we do in our practice, uh, whether it's surgery or, or some of the non-invasive procedures or less invasive procedures. Uh, so we've learned a lot about the equipment and we've learned uh, what we can achieve and, and we've been very happy. It's, it's, a, uh, it's really an entry point to surgery, uh, but it's an intermediary between people that, that want uh, very little and, and people that want a whole lot. And it, it fills that middle ground for us really well. So that's why I really like the Pixel. If, if nothing else, the, the Pixel has become a nice alternative to the fractional CO2 uh, without really the downtime, recognizing that it's a multi-stage procedure. Okay, um, how often do you, do you, I know Madison does the procedures, Madison's your nurse. How often do you think the Pixel 8 gets used yeah, is it used once a week, three times a week? No, no, no. It, it depends on what I can get 
uh, in Madison's schedule, but uh, because she does other things in our practice. But uh, you know, we we like to do uh, probably uh, in a typical week. Uh, she's probably doing four to five a day. So uh, you know, we it's 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 our most common procedure now, even superseding, I think, hydrofacial. So uh, you know, it's a very common procedure for us. We uh, other practices. Uh, if they want to really focus on, on using the pixel, certainly, you know, should improve on even our numbers uh, uh, because uh, we have, as I said, we have uh, various lasers that you have, and those are other alternatives for us. Uh, but, uh, but the pixel is still uh, my go-to for those people that maybe have had surgery and want some additional tightening of their neck. For people with acne scarring, it's the best thing I've seen. Uh, out there, and it's my absolute go-to for those people. Uh, for people with really poor skin, it's really a go-to for those people. And then for those people with dyschromia and blotchy pigmentation, we've been pleasantly pleased with how much it improves that. So it becomes an alternative to uh, the fractional CO2, which you know, uh, in the right hands, probably has five to six days of of noticeable recovery, you know, we have five or six hours of recovery from the pixel. Right, right. Okay, so the pixelate's price, it's the most affordably priced uh, RF microneedling system in the industry. Yeah, no question. And I always get asked this, this question, and I'm gonna ask you this question. Okay, with it priced so affordably, does it have enough power? Yeah, is it underpowered? Do you think it's overpowered, underpowered, just enough power? You know, where do you think the power falls for the Pixelate RF? Well, it has adjustable powers, as you know, and uh, we've gotten used to uh, pushing the envelope with, uh, uh, you know, the delays and, and power settings that we have. And so uh, if you, there, to me, uh, the power is not the issue. It's really what we place the settings on, the power is there in the machine. It's, it's what we place it on and, and in a way, how much patients can tolerate. Uh, you know, when you, when you jack up the power, then, you know, your topical comes into play. Sometimes your nitrous comes into play, but particularly your chilling unit that you sell um, has really been helpful. And, and so all those things tend to mitigate uh, discomfort. And you can push the envelope as far as the patient will let you push it. Uh, we've never seen uh, any type of uh, real, you know, problem with uh, this. We've never seen any burns or uh, any extended, uh, you know, any delayed healing, um, anything of that sort. And that's why it, I, I won't say it's foolproof because that would, that would mean too many fools are probably going to use it. Uh, <laughs> so we don't want to make it foolproof, but uh, I do think that it is a, a very, very safe procedure. Uh, I really feel it's safer than, honestly, uh, Mark, and maybe you won't like me saying this, but, uh, and you can edit it out, I guess, but uh, I think it's safer than the CO2 laser. Uh, and, and it just, uh, you know, I don't worry about the patients that have this procedure. The only thing I worry about is, you know, is it gonna meet whatever expectations they have? We have the ability of adding a procedure to a package of three if they're not happy with what we've done. They think a little bit more can be done or we can run another series of three. Um, I always tell the patient, look, it's not a substitute for a facelift. Don't think of that it is. It's never been a substitute for a facelift. It's for that person that maybe is not that far along or doesn't want a facelift or maybe refuses to give up cigarette smoking. As you know, we won't do facelifts and cigarette smokers. Right. Um, but we do have a policy that whatever we charge them for uh, the uh, uh, microneedling RF, uh, that we will give them 50% uh, of that as credit towards a surgery if they want us to go to the next step. And that sort of is our disclaimer in a way, and it's good to have that type of disclaimer. Okay, well, that brings me to the next question then. How's the efficacy been for your patients? And what have you thought about the efficacy? Do you think it's just the results are okay? Do you think they're they're good or do you think? Well, I think I think they're all over the board, Mark. I mean, I, I think it really depends on uh, patient selection. Uh, at the beginning, uh, 
uh, we, uh, you know, we've learned a lot uh, about patient selection and selecting the proper patient. But I've, I've been, you know, we, we look at these less invasive procedures and I, I don't know of very many technologies that have been out there over the last 20 years that we haven't been asked to take a look at by someone. Someone's put it in our office uh, and, you know, we'll demo it, we'll try it out. Uh, and, you know, I'm a huge skeptic on these less invasive procedures. I'm more of an invasive type of guy. I've got a surgeon's mentality. Uh, I try to do as much surgery as comes in the door. It's what I, what I really love doing. Uh, this is a great procedure because I, I sort of pass it off to uh, one of my nurses who's kind of like a nurse esthetician. I think that's an important thing. I think, you know, it's, it's great to have the security of someone with a degree doing these procedures, but it's not me. And that means I can be doing other things. Uh, right. And so, uh, and, and sometimes I look at those results and I'm pretty amazed at what this will do. But again, I gotta tell you, I started as a skeptic and really the before and after pictures made a believer of me. Typically, I tell people, look, if you can't see a difference between a before and after picture, uh, Mark, uh, and there was, there was a technology that with another company that you were involved with that I had trouble seeing, and it wasn't you that developed that or even sold that, but I had trouble determining the before and after picture, even in the pictures that the company published. With, with this particular procedure, I can see a difference in before and after pictures, and that's, that's really a true testament to testimony to uh, a less invasive procedure. Can you see a difference? Does it make a photographic difference? Then the second thing is how happy is the patient? Placebo wise, patients can be happy even after any procedure is done from swelling and, and, and immediate post-operative types of changes. But the question is how happy is the patient several months after the procedure? And that's what we found with, with this. I can't emphasize enough acne scarring. Uh, because it is the, the one procedure that I think that that's the most important contribution uh, of the Pixel uh, RF, uh, at least in my practice, because acne scarring is a devastating uh, problem that we're all faced with. Uh, and uh, the cures, you know, really have been in the arena of fully ablative laser resurfacing, which is a seven to 10 or 12 day recovery. And it's a, a procedure that is fraught with potential risk. Uh, but yet with, with a series of these uh, less invasive treatments, you know, we've been able to achieve some really nice results for people with acne scarring. And the photos tell the story. And Dr. Wami, you sent me some incredible pictures for, with acne scarring, uh, treating the decollete, uh, treating the neck, treating the jowls. You've, you've sent me some incredible pictures uh, that, with the results that you've gotten with the Pixelate RF. Okay, you've had several of the raw products. I wouldn't even know, by the way, Mark. I don't even know how to Photoshop. So anybody that, and somebody, I know there's Photoshopping that goes on out there, but I, I don't think anybody on my staff is technologically uh, capable of doing any of that stuff anyway. And so uh, whatever we send you is real life stuff. Right, and I appreciate the before and after pictures. Okay, so you've had several of the raw products. Uh, tell me about the service. How often do they break down? And, and when you do have a problem, how often, or what's the response like? How does Roar respond when you have a problem with, your, with one of your units? It's kind of like the Maytag Paramount. We don't really have problems with, with uh, Roar equipment. I, I think I can remember the one time I, we, during a move from our new office that we dropped one of our lasers on its side. I didn't drop it. The movers dropped it and, and did some damage to the fractional. And and you guys immediately traded it out uh, and uh, sent us a loaner. We, we were back in business uh, within a day or two. And uh, I even think that one of your guys may have driven that up uh, from Birmingham to Lexington, which is a six hour drive. And uh, we really appreciate that. Took the old one back, fixed it, brought it back to us. Um, you know, I, I, I think that as long as you're in charge of that company, Mark, uh, the service is always going to be exemplary. Uh, uh, I know you're a really stand-up guy and you treat others like you want to be treated and I've gotten to know you over those 15 years uh, and, and really um, it's like uh, and, and I, don't, I don't have an investment in your company, I wish I did but, uh, but you know you invest in the individual uh, 
and then uh, know that that individual provide the service and the technology. And, and so uh, you've done a great job of really developing not one, but two companies, I guess. And, uh, and both companies have been very successful, but uh, really, I think that's a tribute to you and, and uh, to Mike and uh, you know, to Kevin and the other people that have worked for you for so long. Well, thank you for the kind words. And, and, uh, and Dr. Waldman, it's guys like you who, who have helped Roar set up, achieve our, our success. And I wanna thank you for that as well. Um, let me ask you this. Have you realized your return on investment on your Pixel 8? And if so, how oh, did God. you realize it? I, I, I'm sure I'm sure it paid for itself within uh, the first, I don't know, four or five months. Uh, we did so many of them. So, uh, you know, for us, uh, I, it may not, it may have been in the first two months. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great return on investment, uh, honestly. And um, I think every practice probably needs I mean, whether, whether it's a unit from you or somebody else, I think that uh, when people ask me and they're starting practices, well, what do I need? You know, I'm going to say IPL, uh, uh, a micro microneedling uh, radio frequency unit. And uh, you know me, I'm going to probably say a Surgitron. And, uh, you know, uh, those are the three things that if you just have those things to start a practice, you'll do okay. I mean, that's, that's stuff that I rely on almost. Those are procedures that I do multiple times every single day. Some of the others, yeah, uh, we do, but, uh, but they may not be every single day. And uh, so I, I go ROI and I've given a lot of different talks at meetings. People will ask me, you know, what, what do we need to do to start a practice? What's your most dependable? There's a lot of different lectures I've given. Best ROI, you know, it, it always includes, uh, you know, those products. Right. Okay. And, uh... One last question before we go. Would you recommend the Pixel 8 to your colleagues? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think that I think it should be part of everyone's office. I can't imagine, uh, you know, not having a, uh, a microdeal radio frequency device sitting in our skincare uh, area uh, and not having that to rely on in certain situations where I think it's the best alternative that I can offer that particular patient. Uh, as I said, it becomes a placeholder in a way for other things. And when you consider a patient, you, you, you get a patient, they call your office, they come in, you know, the first thing you say, yeah, you need this, you need that. And they'll say, yeah, I'm not quite ready for that. Well, you gotta have some alternative there because that's the placeholder. That keeps them in your practice. That gives you them the confidence that you're not gonna just throw something at them. You're gonna work through the process with them. And, um, you know, I've heard it said, you want all of your patients to be patients for life. We're in an unusual specialty in that, you know, just because I do a facelift on somebody or rhinoplasty on them, whatever surgical procedure I'm doing on them, I hope that's not the last time that I see them. Right. So I have to have other things uh, to offer them that uh, will continue to address their individual concerns. And, uh, you know, you've, your company has, provided me tools over the years to do exactly that uh, in the various uh, uh, modes that, that we use them. And so, um, yeah, I absolutely believe that it should be part of everyone's practice. Well, I'm going to let you go again. Thank you for everything. I appreciate your time. And um, let me know if we can do anything to help you in the future.